This is the Bears Barroom Radio Network. Parental discretion is advised. There are so many streaming TV series. So many channels. I have a stream. I just don't know which one to watch. Is this show worth our time? I have a stream. I'm three seasons behind already. Is it even worth catching up? I have a stream. What's the series about? Well, my wife liked it too. I have a stream. What channel is it on? And who's in it? I have a stream. I want to watch something new, something original. I have a stream. I want to watch something that's action packed. I have a stream. What's happening, Barflies? This is John Santucci. Call me Tooch. Bears Barroom Radio Network, and I have a stream. I'm with me always is Joe Mandel, Joey Two Scoops. What's going on, brother? How goes it, my friend? And I know we're pumped to talk about Game of Thrones, but I think he's stuck on the mute, but that's all right. We're ready to rock and roll. Joey Two Scoops in the house, and we have a very special bartender that's joining us for the show tonight. I'm going to go ahead and introduce our special guest, the Bears Barroom Way. He's a two-time Emmy Award-winning producer, the founder of the Bears Barroom Radio Network, the barkeeper himself, Aldo Gandia. There he is. It's Aldo Gandia in the house, the master himself. Aldo, how you doing, my friend? I am doing great, and anytime I hear Dan Aguirre's uh, pipes on our network, I get all giddy like a little girl. This guy really brings it with the, his voiceovers. Thanks for that. Very nice. Uh, very well done. Oh, Aldo, it's so great to have you on. I've uh, been 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 uh, hoping you come could come on. Uh, I have a stream and uh, ready to talk some Game of Thrones with you. And uh, about that bar tab, uh, Joe, you got any cash on you? <laughs> drinks on. Uh, our, our drinks on the house, Aldo. Drinks are always on the house at the. Oh, uh, bless your heart! Uh, can I have my usual uh, Aldo a bourbon on the rocks? Bourbon on the rocks, coming right up. Mmm, that sounds good. Oh man! <laughs> you know, uh, by the way, the uh, special uh, of the house is uh, fuzzy navels. So if you're interested in a fuzzy navel, they're uh, they're. Uh, Double free. <laughs> you know what? I, I think I'm going to take that, although that sounds that sounds quite delicious. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Put a couple extra shots in there for you, okay? Yeah, yeah that no. sounds good. Aldo, pour yourself something. Relax. All right. Actually, uh, what I am uh, going to pour myself is a uh, Juicy Lucy. It's a mm-hmm. vodka, gin, blue curacao liquor, orange juice, and a little bit of Sprite. So uh, that's what I'm having, a Juicy Lucy. All right. Oh, that well, sounds good. I'm excited to talk the Game of Thrones uh, Season 8 finale, series finale. And a little, oh, yeah. bit la- a little bit later, my sultry neighbor is going to drop by. Uh, right now, Joe, let's just bring in our first guest. I'm super excited. Welcome him, yeah. barroom style. Yes, sir. He's a reformed lawyer with a passion for football. A national sports writer for Pro Football Weekly, Inside the Pylon, and Patriots Wire. He's the real reason behind the success of Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. He knows every pass play of every quarterback ever. I mean, like, every quarterback ever. Please give a big barroom welcome to Mark Schofield. There he is, everybody. Mark Schofield in the house. Mark, how you doing, my friend? It just warms my heart every time the intros. <laughs> they're so well done on the show. Guys, it's just a pleasure to be here. And I know we scheduled me to come on 
for the post finale show. And given the way it went down last night, I'm kind of regretting coming on <laughs> the post finale <laughs> breakdown. I mean, we're gonna do our do our best to. I don't know, shine this one up, I guess. But it's a pleasure to be with you. Excited to talk about this and excited to talk about how this show came to a close last night. Oh, man, Mark, uh, thanks again for coming on. And uh, and I have a stream. We're going to do just a couple quick recommendations because we're about recommending a streaming series, whether it's worth the time or not. And we're going to do a little what are you watching and how's it going for you? So give us uh, what you're watching now and, and if you can recommend it to our I Have a Stream Pod audience. Uh, that'd be great. Thanks. Yeah, sure. And actually, what I'm watching now is actually a show that's airing at the moment, and it's on HBO. It's Chernobyl, their little docudrama about the 1980s Chernobyl nuclear power plant accident and the aftermath that went down in Chernobyl, Russia. And it's on HBO. It's a fantastic docudrama. It's gripping television. Um, even though you know what happened, the way they sort of intro the show, I'm not going to really spoil it because we all know kind of what happened, but I don't want to spoil the show in case people haven't watched it. But there's they get you right into basically the aftermath of it. There's a character who sort of is involved in the post accident aftermath and they deal with his demise right at the up there up front about it. And then they get you into the event itself and the immediate aftermath and how they sort of deal with it. And what's fascinating about the show is, you know, how they sort of come to terms with what is going on in Soviet communist Russia and somebody, you know, middle of the pack intermediate, you know, party leaders more concerned about covering themselves than what they have to actually deal with and the fact of the situation on the ground. And it's a fascinating show. And along with that, HBO actually has the Chernobyl podcast, which comes out after each episode. It's with the show's creator and it breaks down the episodes some of the decisions that he made from a show running standpoint. Um, on the premiere episode of the podcast, he talked about how they dealt with the accents and they decided, look, we're just going to let these people talk because if we tried to like force a Russian accent on people or, you know, a Ukrainian accent on, accent on people would sound hokey. So we're just going to let people talk and let the words and the story speak for themselves. So I would highly recommend both the show and the podcast. It's just tremendous television, tremendous show, tremendous podcast as well. Yeah, I am also watching that and I am really enjoying it. So I will second that recommendation. Love uh, the cast is great. Love Jared yeah. Harris, uh, Sir Richard Harris's son. He's always good. Uh, Stellan Skarsgård also really good in that. It's got a great cast. Uh, very dramatic. A lot of drama. Good drama. And uh, like you said, more concerned about covering their own asses. Right. Exactly. Led to a lot of problems. Especially and, uh, Master Lowen as well. You know, he was on it, and in the premiere episode, he gives the speech about, you know, what we do here tonight will echo through the ages. Like, what you're going to do here is, like you said, control the flow of information. And you've got, like, people lined up just across the street, basically, with bottles of vodka, like, watching, ooh, those are some pretty colors. What do you think those blue towers of light are hidden from the <laughs> power plant? Is it, you think that's okay? And this one guy turns to his girlfriend or whatever. He's like, no, I know somebody that works there. He says, you just drink vodka and you'll be fine. It's just <laughs> amazing to think, you know, this is what actually happened. And on the podcast, the show's creator says that scene literally unfolded where people got together to watch from like across the street what it looked like. It yeah. Amazing moment. So, yeah, it's a fantastic show. Right. So, uh, Aldo, what are you watching and how's it going for you? Well, I got to tell you that uh, when you live in a household with uh, a lot of women, sometimes you've got to make some choices that you probably wouldn't ordinarily make. And so when we came across the uh, Netflix series called Dead to Me, ordinarily I probably would not have watched that, despite the fact that I am a fan of Christina Applegate and Linda Cardellini. Cardellini, uh, she starred in Mad Men. I'm a fan of both of those, but I probably would have skipped that over because the list of things to watch is just growing and growing and growing. Well, I got to tell you, I'm really, really happy that I sat down and watched that uh, with the ladies of the house. This is a really good Netflix series. Ten episodes, each about 30 minutes uh, in length, so you can binge the whole thing on one night, which is what we did, by the way. And uh, the storyline is uh, Christina Applegate is named Jen. Her husband was recently killed in a hit-and-run accident, and so she goes about trying to find out who it was that killed her husband. And during the process, she befriends a very eccentric uh, woman played by Linda Cardellini. I can't pronounce the name. Too, yeah. too, 
No. You're no longer Italian, Aldo. <laughs> I never have been, but I've been <laughs> for pretending to be sometimes. <laughs> but that's a fact. Uh, either way, uh, it's a really good show. And one, uh, if you you and your spouse are, are looking for something to watch together, Dead to Me is a really good show. It's a black comedy, so sometimes for some people, some of the comedy kind of escapes them or irritates them or just doesn't sit well with them. But the, overall, I liked it a lot. And again, it's just 10 episodes of 30 minutes uh, each. It, it's I know you guys have been talking about Barry uh, recently, which is another show that I love and had a great season finality finale last night uh this this is in that same vein where it's it's an easy to digest morsel of streaming television good stuff all right joe you're also watching barry i think and uh did you make it to the uh, finale of the first season no i'm still i'm still kind of working my way through it i kind of got distracted and i actually started watching another show Mm. Uh, i never watched it from the beginning i started watching deadwood i've never watched it from the beginning incredible show and it's got me excited because i can get all the way through it and then you have deadwood the movie coming out this summer on hbo so that's amazing ian mcshane is an unbelievable actor he was in one episode of game of thrones as well so i mean that guy is unbelievable if you haven't seen deadwood highly recommend it because it's one of the best westerns out there excellent also i i recently watched uh, the wandering earth on netflix which is a chinese movie it's the largest movie that China has ever produced with a half a billion dollars at their box office or worldwide box office. And it's kind of a, a sci-fi uh, adventure. It's kind of uh, a mashup of, of gravity, sunshine, and Snowpiercer. So if you uh, liked those three movies, you'll enjoy The Wandering Earth, which is on Netflix. It just came out, and it's about two hours long. So, uh, Joe, uh, let's let Mark unburden himself and uh, do some TV confessional. Sure thing. Let's start with the drop. Confess. 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 I confess. Not you. I confess. Who was that? Well, I didn't expect a kind of Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Shame. 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 <laughs> so, so Mark, what is your uh, TV confessional, a show you like to watch that's kind of your guilty pleasure that uh, you don't usually share with others? Right, or if you're embarrassed to watch a show, you know, you've never seen a show, like, you know. I'll, you know. I'll, I'll give you one in both categories. How about that? There's a show <laughs> that I'm working my way through right now called Nightfall. It's a Knights Templar show. You could stream it um, via Netflix. It's not great. I mean, the plot lines are pretty thin. The acting, not the best acting out there. But I'm a sucker for anything Knights Templar. I'm a sucker for anything Holy Grail. I mean, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade comes on. I'm going to watch it because of the Holy Grail storyline. I'm, I'm fascinated by that bit of history. And so it's not the best show. I'm working my way through it. The acting is not fantastic. Some of the plot turns you can see coming from a mile away. But still, I'm going to plow through this because it's right up my alley in terms of guilty sort of guilty pleasures. As far as a show that I'm going to admit, flat out, never watched a moment of it. And I know – actually, I'll give you two shows in this category. Both of these have become sort of you know, cultural icon type shows, and one of which just had its series finale. But Big Bang Theory, haven't watched a minute of it, never will, just, just not my cup of tea. And the other is The Walking Dead. And I could sit here and tell you that oh. I haven't watched The Walking Dead because I'm not a huge zombie guy, but then I'm sitting here ready to talk about a show that just had a huge zombie-type plot line and interwoven throughout <laughs> its, its entire you know, show run. But those two shows, Big Bang Theory, Walking Dead, haven't watched a minute of them other than what I've seen, like walking into a room and somebody else is watching it and then either walking right through the room or walking right back out. Just neither one ever did it for me. <laughs> uh, Aldo, do you have anything to confess to Father Tooch? Yes, as a matter of fact, I'm going to take the same route that Mark did uh, give you two. Uh, the one that I have not seen and am embarrassed by, and you guys just mentioned it a little while ago, it's Deadwood, uh, the HBO series that got just critical acclaim. I expect that I finally have seen that. I think the reason that I, I missed it, if I remember correctly, it just it came on the heels of The Sopranos, 
and I think that I was just kind of like, you know, enough with the intensity. <laughs> I'm going to take a break from intense HBO uh, uh, stuff and uh, just uh, have not caught up with it. But I promise to do so before the feature film is out, which I'm really looking forward to that. And then one that I am uh, incredibly embarrassed to admit, and I've done this on some other Bears Barroom Radio Network, and I'm surprised I haven't been flogged for it, is I am a Bachelor Bachelorette fan. I... <laughs> <laughs> Look at Mark. Just so embarrassed to be on the show. <laughs> hey, I got to admit that, you know, as a uh, horny old 60-year-old man, you know, I started watching for the cute-looking girls on the show, but I've stuck around because the storylines are so compelling, and I know it's all bullshit. I wouldn't want my daughters to be on that show, but we all watch it together. We have a good laugh, and... Um, it is what it is. I'm hooked on it. And as soon as we're done here, I'm going to go watch the replay of tonight's episode of The Bachelorette. <laughs> I mean, at least now you can say there's somewhat of a football angle to it, too, because you had PFF Mike was on it. You had some of the, like, you know, some other guys that were tight ends in the league. So you can at least say, hey, I know this guy. That's PFF Mike. I know him. That's so right. That. I tell my daughters all the time, you know, Colton Underwood was a uh, quarterback. and. Yeah. He threw for X amount of yards and so forth. Uh, nothing I can do can hide the shame, though. I am really embarrassed by the fact that I watched that. <laughs> but it's like, you know, the proverbial, you know, you stop and watch the auto accident on the expressway and just clog up the uh, traffic lanes for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Joe, how about we do a little uh, second chance series and then my sultry neighbor, I think she's going to stop by. I don't know. Uh well, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly give my uh, okay my guilt or not my guilty pleasure my uh, confessional, and that's I've I've never watched a single episode of Dallas. Uh, I know a lot of people in you my fiance's family. Yet. Well, this is true, but you know it's classic starring you know Larry Hagman, who was also starring in uh, I Dream of Jeannie. Didn't see a single episode, and uh, I mean I share his uh, first name and and middle initial. People, I'm Joseph Roberts, so Jr. So everyone calls me like, hey, JR, did someone shoot you? I'm like, I don't know. I never saw the damn show. <laughs> so that's my confessional there, Tooch. <laughs> well, I, I just throw it in there. I have, I've only watched one episode of Deadwood. I'm trying to get caught up before the movie. So uh, how about a little second chance series, Joe? And we'll bring, uh, hopefully, my, sec my sultry name will drop by. Sounds like a plan. Don't, don't give up. Oh, I, I love me some big star, Joe. You know that. Um, oh, yes, you do. Mark, give us a series that you started watching you didn't like, and then you came back to maybe, and you were glad you did. No, it's it's amazing. We might as well, we've talked about this show already. We might as well round it out make sure it's in each category. I'll go with Deadwood, because when that first came out, it was like Aldo said. I was just like, you know what? I'm not ready for this. Like, I needed a little bit of break from, like Aldo said, like the serious, tense drama. So I put it away. I put it to the side, and then... You know, just a couple of weeks ago when it was like, oh, yeah, that's right, right. The movie's coming out. I picked it up again and I've been ripping through that entire series. And I'm so glad that I did. There's just the acting is fantastic. Ian McShane is just unbelievable. I just got through a couple of days ago the Kirsten Bell, like making her like TV debut in season one. Just a couple of episodes in there. But it was just fantastic to see her. Timothy Oliphant, he's amazing. Just understated actor and playing his role very stoic, very robotic, but still just an impressive performance. And so glad I picked that back up. Hopefully, I'll, you know, I'm pretty close to the finish line there, so I'll be able to pick up the uh, movie when it drops in a couple of weeks. Excellent. Aldo, any second chance series for you? Yeah, I got I to gotta tell you that uh, I saw an episode and a half, I think, of Russian Doll. Uh, I believe it's on Netflix. Oh, that was so I good. I said, yeah, very good. I said after the first episode and a half, I was like, oh, I don't know if I can get into this, you know, 
And uh, a few weeks went by, and I said, oh, let me see if I can uh, get back into it. Well, I binged it that night. I was up till 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Couldn't wait to see how they concluded that thing. It is a really, really cool comedy drama. Very dark, and uh, Natasha Leon stars in it, and she's just an excellent actor. Uh, uh, casting all, all the way around uh, is great. It's very inventive, unique uh, type of uh, show. I, I highly recommend it. You might uh, be like me and be a little bored uh, the first uh, episode or two. It's, it's an intriguing premise, um, but you just got to kind of stick with it, and, and it starts to pay dividends, uh, particularly by the third or fourth episode. And it's, it's uh, you, you just, just like me, I bet you will get through it all in a night or two or maybe a weekend. Yeah, really short episodes, about 25 minutes long each one. Mm -hmm. uh, Natasha Leone is really funny and really cute. And uh, it's kind of, if you like Groundhog Day, you'll love uh, Russian Doll. So, uh, uh, yeah, I also uh, binge that really quick. Hey, guys, how's it going? Oh, my sultry neighbor has just dropped by, Joe. <laughs> she dropped by, and look at that. I have her drop queued up. She's a real estate professional by day. A Chardonnay sipping streaming TV series fan by night. She's Tooch's sultry neighbor. Give it up for Shay Beck. Hi. Welcome, Shay. <laughs> uh, we are just getting ready to talk some uh, Game of Thrones season. Finale, series finale, to be honest, and uh, I'm glad disappointedly you ready. You are. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll hope we can uh, recap it, and everyone can, uh, you know, get get this off their chest and uh, move on to the next uh, series. But first, Joe's going to deliver the news in two scoops or less. I sure am. <laughs> what? You look like Mary Poppins. Is he cool? Hell yeah, he's cool. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? It's entertainment news in two scoops or less. Holy smokes! That's right, everybody. This is the part of the show where I bring you the entertainment news in two scoops or less. So I'm going to lead things off in, during last night's Game of Thrones finale in a huge surprise to Game of Thrones viewers last night. HBO unveiled the new trailer for Westworld Season 3. Aaron Paul looks to be the new lead in a hyper-realistic future utopia. Series regular Evan Rachel Wood also makes a surprise appearance in the trailer. Westworld Season 3 is scheduled to premiere sometime in 2020. So that's going to be an exciting one, guys. I know I'm excited about that. Uh, and lastly here in the entertainment news, we've got Hulu announced that Joshua Jackson, Reese Witherspoon, and Kerry Washington have been cast in the Hulu-exclusive limited series Little Fires Everywhere. The series is based on the best-selling book of the same name, and a premiere date has not yet been announced. But that's a, a killer cast there for a very popular selling book that is part of uh, part of Reese Witherspoon's book club. So I got that little scoop from my fiance. So thank you for that one, honey. I appreciate that. But uh, I think it's time to keep moving, gentlemen. What do you say? Yeah, well... Can I can I uh, jump in here because I just read in Variety that John Wick Four has been confirmed with a 2021 release date, and oh wow, that's something that I'm embarrassed to say that I have not seen any of the three John Wick movies, and I'm dying to, I'm dying to because everything I've read about the series uh, is just super impressive. I love it when uh, stunt directors, stunt actors turn into directors. They know how to deliver the action, and uh, I can't wait to do a binge on the john wick movies and then i'll have uh, number four to look forward to in 2021 i'm in the same boat although i haven't seen any of them Ooh. and i'm sick about it <laughs> wow so good man yeah my wife is a huge fan uh yeah and then we'll get to get to that on box office bar flies uh, but, oh no no yeah. doubt about that if we're uh ready to hit the game of thrones talk we first have a word from our sponsor joe 
Yes, sir. Huh. Sir Two Scoops, help! I've been stabbed by my boyfriend, who's also my nephew. I need a maester. Oh no, my lady. Let me send for help. Don't worry, I have a plan. Are you mortally wounded? Call Dragon EMT. Emergency medical transportation. We will whisk you off by Dragon to the Citadel or the healer of your choice. Dragon Emergency Medical Transportation. And that oh. was a word from our sponsor. Wow, <laughs> if I ever get stabbed by, uh, by my prom date, I will uh, be happy to ride my dragon, Joe. <laughs> yeah, man, that's uh, that's pretty deep stuff. How about uh, we get in, down into the uh, Game of Thrones talk, Joe? Oh, yeah! Well, the last song there being Disappointment, John. <laughs> the, uh, that was the Kinks with uh, Do It Again. Damone was stabbed through the heart. And, of course, one of my favorite bands, XTC, with The Disappointed. <laughs> so that sums up the series finale for me, Joe, of uh, Game of Thrones. So I figured uh, we would uh, start by kind of going through all the characters and how their stories ended. And let's just start with the winner of the game, Joe, and uh, Bran my least favorite character, the winner of the game, Joe. Uh, yeah, well, let's, let's, let's uh, go around how you thought, uh, uh, how you felt about uh, the winner of the Game of Thrones, and we'll start with Mark. <laughs> I mean, as far as this episode, this is probably the biggest disappointment for me, because here's a character that you could have done so much more with. I mean, we were all expected, like, in, you know, the Lawn Knight, for example. What does he do? Like, he ro eyes roll into the back of his head, and where does he go? We don't know. And they could have done so much more with this character throughout the season. I mean, I think everybody's biggest complaint is the pacing of this entire season, and for basically season seven as well. Like, they rushed so much. They were, you know, hyperdrive to a conclusion to get it done. They could have spent almost an entire episode basically on where Bran went in that moment but they didn't do it it just fell flat and then to have him sort of end up you know the quote-unquote winner of the game of thrones on the iron throne or whatever's left after drogon singed it to nothingness it was just disappointing and i know that george R. R. martin for example has always said you know the, the greatest leaders are the ones that don't want it and, you know, that was a theme woven well throughout this show and made people wonder, well, of course, is it going to be Jon Snow winning at the end because he doesn't want it? And they had us drive into that conclusion. In the meanwhile, back around, you've got Tyrion asking Bran, what's he want? He wants nothing. He's no one. He's not even a human being anymore. And then at the end, when they let the prisoner come up with the new world and he asks Bran, you know, do you even want it? You don't even want it. He says, why do you think I'm here? Wait, what? 
Where does yeah. this come from? It, so just yeah. that part of the entire episode just really fell flat for me. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Bran arguably did the least of anyone to become king. Yeah, I mean, what was yeah. the meme that was floating? First of all, the post-show memes are always fantastic on Twitter. <laughs> and there was somebody that put out a tweet that was a picture of Bran, and it's like, when you do nothing for the group project but get the A anyway. It's like, yeah, that's basically <laughs> how I felt about it. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that when they rebuild uh, King's Landing, there'll be more ramps, though. Right. Okay. Yeah, it'll be it'll be ADA compliant, which is good. We like that. That's right. Oh, oh. Well, is isn't that what Drogon made out of the Iron Throne yeah, anyway? A wheelchair Drogon. ramp. Yes. Uh, Aldo, uh, that did the uh, uh, Bran winning the game or ending up as king seem a little forced to you? How'd you feel? Uh, a little forced. It felt like uh, they had a meeting with the author of the books and they m totally misunderstood what he was telling them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I, I agree with Mark. I mean, this is the most underdeveloped character in the entire series of the major characters. And so why would you award him the throne? It was totally unsatisfying for the audience. Yeah. This is a guy who this is a character who missed an entire season and nobody noticed. This is a character who has has just had no charisma throughout the entire run of Game of Thrones. His biggest moment was when he was tossed off the tower and he probably should have died and stayed dead <laughs> at that point. And so there just wasn't any emotional involvement in giving it uh, to uh, Bronn. In fact, I was about as excited uh, 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 at, at, of seeing him get the throne as he was himself uh, getting it. This was just a a major mistake by the showrunners who have not uh, failed us frequently, but uh, here was a major, major uh, uh, failure on their part. Yeah, and uh, if you've listened to I Have a Stream, you know, uh, Joe and I were, we talked a lot about uh, where are we going to get a happy ending uh, Shay, do you think uh, they kind of went out of their way to avoid giving us the ending we expected, which would, which to me I would have preferred? But what do you think? What would have been your happy ending, John? Well, you know, Jon Snow and Daenerys, you know, a love story. Instead, we got Cersei and Jamie, a love story of brother and sister buried under rocks. You wanted Danny to still be alive? Yeah. Really? I'm, a, I'm on Team Danny. <laughs> well, John, I can promise oh, you like, I don't want to give you, you a happy alive? ending. <laughs> I just. What did you think? Uh, and the uh, whole Bron being the king, I I kind of understand it. And I also think that they're leaving things out there. There's so much unsaid, so much about, like, he's a great storyteller. What's the What leads kingdoms is stories. Isn't that what he's, I don't know. Yeah, did you like it, though? No, I hated every minute of it. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> of Joe, course. <laughs> Joe, your thoughts on Bran winning at the end? Uh, forced, maybe uh, rushed, uh, trying to uh, was, trying to trick us into a trick ending. It was definitely forced and uh, felt slightly rushed, but I think the best way to sum it up is one of my coworkers, his, his name is Brent, uh, sent me a, a meme that had this caption on it that I think captures it perfectly, and it said, giving the crown to Bran is like giving the Super Bowl MVP to the long snapper. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think that's pretty accurate. Uh, Bran didn't want it. Yeah. He, he said he didn't want it in Winterfell before. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like Mark said, now he wants it. And yeah. uh, I, but I would argue that Arya has a better story than Bran does. So I mean, yeah. What? How could you say that? And then obviously, John has the best story. I mean, he was dead, and they brought him back. But right. they I wanted to avoid a war, so I guess I get it. Like uh, like Mark said, you know, I mean, uh, it was letting the prisoner, you know, you, you, they should, most of them should have been shut up, you know. You're you don't get a say. You're in jail, you know. But uh, I, Bran also, he was like, maybe I can find Drogon. I, I don't understand how he's going to go out and find Drogon if he could, if he could war again to Drogon. Why did he do that and prevent the uh, King's Landing disaster? <laughs> King's Landing uh, and Chernobyl, lot in common, Mark. <laughs> uh, uh, I want to move on to uh, Daenerys. Um, man, if, if Daenerys if Daenerys was your favorite character, Mark, uh, are you undoubtedly upset? Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you were Team Danny going into this season, and I'll admit, like, 
my happy ending was, look, three dragons, they're all potentially Targaryen, so I want to see this ended with, you know, Danny on the throne, ruling some triumvirate with Tyrion and Jon. They've all got potentially Targaryen lineage, lineage, and they're all riding dragons, and, you know, Ramin Jawadi's happy music is playing, and everybody's smiling. Like, that's kind of the happy ending, I think, for me. That I, you know, if you think back a couple of seasons, that's what I wanted. But, you know, I guess it's... The ending for Danny is also difficult because, yes, there was some foreshadowing. Yes, you know, here, George R. R. Martin, the Targaryen history, it's called fire and blood. Those are their words. Like, that's what they were driving to. And so you sort of understand it. But again, it's it felt rushed to the point where you're like, oh, she's going to snap and just melt Kin's Landons at the ground because John didn't kiss her back and all. And Miss Sandy got beheaded. Like, it's just... Again, they could have spent an entire episode or two in the past couple of seasons and really like driven this home a bit. And so you wouldn't felt so rushed and it was just like it was forced. Um, and in terms of like given what they had to work with going into this finale, like, OK, it was fine. Like you could see that it had to be done. And that's the point what they were trying to make. And Tyrion drove it home to John. And again, why are we letting people come in and talk to prisoners? Like it was Tyrion and Jamie last episode. It was John and, J and Terry in this one, but that happens anyway. And Tyrion makes the point like, you know, do you think she's just going to stop here? Do you think she's just going to stop, you know, when this is what she's been driving towards her whole life? This is the destiny she believes. So like, I get it. But again, it was like forced. That, that was basically like, if you wanted to sum up this entire season in one word, it was forced. Yeah, we were worried about that, Joe and I, uh, that with only six episodes, you know, it would be rushed, you know, rushed yeah. to the ending, uh, and perhaps they wouldn't stick the landing. Uh, all taken with all of Danny, to me, was still a child, or at least, you know, an immature adolescent, you know, because at, at her ending, it looked like she was hopeful, you know, for a good world, and there was that, there was that scene between her and John, you know, where she was like, we can build it together, you know, and maybe, you know... We could have gotten, you know, a little bit right. of a happy ending, which I, I actually would prefer. I know that George R. R. Martin likes to uh, dash the hopes of readers or viewers or whatever and give you an alternate ending. But uh, to me, I think it would have been a better story. Although, uh, what do you think uh, about uh, the ending for Danny? Well, um, I um. I guess I guess it was okay for me. I, that was probably the least of my problems with with the series. Uh, I, I totally agree with Mark and that the whole thing was rushed. And I think that you know the majority of fans will admit that that, that that's their true opi uh, opinion, whether they loved uh, the way the final season was or not. You know, I, I I I always get this this thought in my mind of the showrunners going up to HBO and saying, well. We've got about uh, 16 more hours of uh, of ideas for us, and HBO saying we've only got about six hours of budget for you guys. So cram it all in to six shows, uh, and even then they went over budget because the one thing you can, you have to admit about this show, even if the storytelling let us down, the visualization of uh, of of this series has been spectacular. I can't think of another TV show and most big bigger budget movies being better uh at visualizing their story than the game of thrones uh people have have done that image of danny walking up the stairs with the dragon's wings behind her that was breathtaking oh yeah, yeah. that was cool so that many cool. other images uh in this show and and for that reason alone i'm not disappointed uh uh, with this series because I could just watch this thing with the volume off and be entertained. It's just so spectacularly shot. Aside from that one episode where I couldn't see anything other than that, I am uh, right. <laughs> I'm really in love with it. But to answer your question, you know, I, I, I could have thought, uh, you know, I, I hate to compare myself with uh, Emmy Award winning writers, uh, but I think I could have thought of some better <laughs> ways to to, to uh, kill off Danny. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. And, and uh, I, I'm not uh, at all uh, I'm, I'm not too disappointed with the way that it, that uh, part of the storyline was was handled. Right. It would have been nice if we could have gotten a few more of those winged devil scenes you know with danny you know just to kind of foreshadow it a little better but as we said the past last season season seven was only seven episodes this season only six episodes and 
Uh, Benioff and Weiss, maybe. It felt like they had one foot in the pool, to tell you the truth. Maybe they were right in the Star next, Wars. Star Wars, exactly. Too focused on Star Wars. Right. So, uh, and of course, the actors were tired. Of course, the actors complaining uh, in the media, you know, about the uh, last season. Best season ever. Uh, of course, and uh, uh, Shea, did you, uh, did you buy the... Uh, the transformation of Daenerys. I know you watched the show really quickly. You watched uh, all all eight, all seven eight seasons in a month or two. Did you buy Danny turning uh, crazy? Did yes. It work? Yeah, yeah. I guess I did. I mean, you get all that power, and of course you're gonna abuse it. Okay. Yeah. For me, I you know I, I guess maybe I was too much team Danny, but there were. I, you know, I'm plenty of plenty of uh, signposts along the way. I mean, she crucified a whole bunch of guys, uh, killed uh, killing the slave masters and the nobles. But uh, I want to uh, ask Joe: um, Were you? Uh, do you think uh, the show writers purposely wanted to avoid uh, the storybook ending? Uh, do you think uh, George R. R. Martin was just like, you know what, guys? I, I I haven't gotten to the ending yet. You're on your own. What do you think? That's kind of the way it felt, and I'll tell you one thing. It, it definitely doesn't feel like a George R.R. R. Martin ending. Uh, it's a little too hopeful for that, I think. I think when George finally gets around to it, uh, he's going to make things uh, right, if you will. And I think it's going to be a totally different ending because I think partially HBO set up that ending to set up some spinoffs, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, it definitely set, seems to be set up for a sequel as opposed to closing out the story so that's just the vibe that i got right and you're talking about aria i think maybe yeah. uh aria's aria's uh you know trip west as well as john snow's trip beyond the wall I i'll watch a john snow and and tormund show it'd be a comedy i'd like that <laughs> right um and as far as aria let's just talk about her for a second one of my favorite characters we spent uh season six right where she went through all of her training you know, and then up here, last season, she didn't use it at all. You know, it was kind of disappointing. Uh, Mark, did you uh, like the way Arya's story turned out? Would you watch an Arya show? I would definitely watch an Arya spinoff. I mean, Arya's travels, like what's west of Westeros. Of course, you know, the easy answer to that is, Brad, why don't you tell us? Like, hop into a raven and let us know what's west of Westeros. But of course, you know, <laughs> they still can't use Bran. Right? But... <laughs> No, I, I think Arya's ending was okay. I mean, after you have her kill the Night King, which, you know, I didn't get sort of the backlash to that. I mean, she's been trained to become the most powerful assassin in the known world by some of the best killers known to all mankind. Like, of course, she was set up to do that. You know, I think if they had had her either then go on to kill either Cersei and or Danny, I think that probably would have been a bit too much. Um, I would definitely watch a spinoff with her. I think, you know, had she been interested in it, she would have had a very interesting story to perhaps put her name into candidacy for the next ruler of the realm. But I would, I'm happy, I think, with her ending. I would definitely watch the hell out of an Arya spinoff. And, you know, watching Maisie Williams, the actress, grow in front of our eyes, like, you know, the actor of the Parade brand maybe didn't quite, maybe he grew into that role in a sense, but Maisie Williams growing up for her eyes and just becoming a tremendous actress. I think her performance uh, along with all these actors and actresses, I think is to be commended. Yeah. And T Terry and of course, Peter Dinklage standing out for me. Yeah. Uh, this was fantastic. It, the last couple seasons, his character was, uh, I don't know, I waste, wasted, uh, I think, but, uh, yeah, also, uh, you know, the, the, it was hard. The, the younger actors really grew up. You saw, uh, Sweet Robin is a, he's a future NBA draft pick, Joe. Yeah. So, <laughs> Apparently that uh, time yeah. for the veil doing uh, wonders for him. Right. <laughs> he's come a long way from suckling at the, the breasts a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> Almost as good as Giant's Milk. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Tyrion, I want to talk about Tyrion. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, I, I was a little disappointed. I mean, Tyrion... He kind of he tricks John into killing Danny and stabs him in the back by choosing Bran as king. Uh, Shay, what what did you think about uh, the way Tyrion ended? And then then he gets named Hand of the King. It's like he walked. He was given a third chance as Hand of the King. Yeah, but they made it off like it was his punishment, <laughs> right? Being the Hand of the King. 
<laughs> Most people only get like one or two chances. Tyrion got three chances. So uh, la last few seasons, Tyrion, uh, his decisions were kind of stupid. You know, I know the actor Peter Dinklage just said, I, I would never ha uh, hide out down in a crypt when someone's outside resurrecting dead bodies. So, <laughs> but, uh, He's not wrong. He's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, uh, Joe, what'd you think about uh, the end for uh, Tyrion? Uh, did you, uh, were you happy with the way his character ended? You know, I'm I'm rather indifferent on the situation. Uh, I wasn't happy and I wasn't displeased. I was just kind of somewhere in the middle of the road because it was a very Tyrion ending, but the the total 180 about picking Bran and all the you know the the, the rhetoric behind it, uh, it just seemed so anti-Tyrion and so like the, the writers didn't know the character. Because if that's Tyrion, in my opinion, he's either gonna go with Jon Snow. Or he's gonna go with Sansa, and he totally flips himself and, and picks Bran, because like I know I talked about it earlier, but he doesn't have anywhere near the greatest story out of everyone there. So I don't know. I just thought it was kind of a BSy kind of ending. Right. He did have a little bit of a a, a conversation with Bran that we weren't privy to uh, in Winterfell. I think uh, uh, he said, you know, it's too bad we're we're trapped in a snowstorm and nothing to do, but. Uh, yeah, and, and, and that's another another example of this season. Like they could have done more with that moment. Instead, we're left to sort of wonder. Like if there was this long conversation with the two of them, and you know, what's the line that Tyrion had a couple of seasons ago? The history of the world is a history of great conversations. Show us that conversation because if they had set it up where. You know, Bran talks about his visions about what he has seen, and he is a green seer. He can see the future. He saw the dragon shadow over King's Landing. You know, he's seen this. Like, they could have built to this moment and said we're left to wonder what was during that conversation that we didn't get to see. Like, they could have set it up so much better than just, hey, why don't we pick Bran the Broken? And by the way, can we get a guy a better nickname? Like, <laughs> Aegon the Conqueror. Like we've had these great nicknames for for some of these canes in history. We're just brand the broken. Like, what? yeah, horrible. Yeah, horrible. Yeah. I, he can't I, have liked that one. No, it's like, oh, thanks for okay. that. You I sure, mean, I'll be king now. <laughs> I mean, well, more like brand brand the bump on the log, man. Yeah. I didn't do anything. <laughs> That's like naming uh, Michael Jordan, you know, uh, Gravity Jordan or Helium Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a ridiculous thing like that. Yeah, that doesn't work for a king. <laughs> Oxygen Gordon. Yeah. Jordan. Yeah. He went, I mean, he kind of screwed himself when he got John, you know, in as much trouble as he was. Yeah. You know, he could he couldn't suggest John. You know, yeah, and, and, yeah, Grey Worm, that guy that you're chomping at the bit to execute and like put a head on a spike, let's make him king. How would you feel right. about that? You know, I, I really wanted to, I'm glad you mentioned Grey Worm. I was going to get to him, but uh, I really wanted to see John and Grey Worm fight because this, yeah. the episode was kind of yeah. drop, dropping hot garbage all over the place for me. So I was like, let's just have them fight like Euron and Jamie. Why not? Here, we're going down this road. You know, I would have loved to see I would have loved to have seen that fight, but uh, I mean, all we got was the stink eye at the end of the at the end of the episode <laughs> no. as, as he walked along the dock. But, I thought John was going to get a spear through the heart right uh, there. I just it didn't like happen. A, that would have been cool, like a surrender in Lannister. Yeah, <laughs> right. I would have loved to have seen that. I mean, uh, I, the whole thing with uh, we'll get, might as well talk about John. Let's just get it out of the way because the whole uh, show, you know, you had this pauper to king, you know, mystery identity that just really ended up going nowhere kind of he was he never got to be him is who he really was he always always had to stay uh kind of mr anonymous throughout the whole show he never got to say i'm i'm friggin aegon targaryen i'm the heir to the throne you know and he would have made a great king i mean maybe not the smartest guy he's he's, he's been involved in the death of both of his girlfriends but <laughs> let's uh let's talk about john for a minute uh Shay, what, uh, what were you happy with uh, uh, John's ending of uh, being uh, sentenced to the uh, the Night's Watch again? Even there, even yeah, but then he no leaves Night's the Watch. Night's Watch and runs off. I mean, who knows? He's going to be the leader of them. Right, the leader of the free. Folk. I mean, I agree. With there's all these, like, for other sequels. Yeah. Because, yeah, I'm not disappointed. I actually thought he was going to die. Okay. So, so that he's alive is a yeah. bright point. Okay, it's not bright, my happy ending. Bright but... spot there. Uh, <laughs> the uh, 
You know, he, he kind of becomes Mance Raider, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> the, I mean, the they're kid, setting up for him to the be wall. the next kid be on the wall. And, I, you know, I, I think it's disappointing in a sense because, look, this was built into, you know, him being a Targaryen. And, and that was, you know, his identity was such a focus of this show for the first six seasons. And then they kind of, like, breeze past it. And I think the sort of underlying message is, look, your identity is not your name. It's just who you are. And with John's background and, you know, going beyond the wall he was like Tormund said a man of the real north and so in the end you know with him finally reunited with ghost thank god we get him pet and ghost otherwise i really would have snapped. yes you know him going <laughs> beyond the wall with the free folk to probably live in the real north i think makes sense for his true identity i mean the fact that he was a targaryen that wasn't really who he was he was a man of the north so he was a stark more than anything else and so i i get it i think it makes sense it's a shame that he got played in the way that he did. I mean, Sansa was basically like, oh, you just told me this. And I swore I took an oath that I wouldn't. Oh, by hey, Tyrion, by the way, guess what I just learned? And I got to tell you this uh. because Danny just terrifies me. And Bran's just like, yeah, I know the truth about you. And, you know, I'm going to be king now. Bye bye. Have fun at the wall. Like, you know, kind of got done wrong by his family. Yeah, yeah exactly. In the end, where he ends up, I think, was where he belonged. All right, uh, Aldo, uh, I mean, we'll get to Sansa, of course, uh, but Jon Snow, uh, we had a huge buildup, you know, who is he, you know, what's his real, who is his mom, who is his dad, or, you know, all this stuff, and he never got to, uh, you know, become who he was meant to be. To me, it fell flat, what did you think? Well, yeah, it definitely fell flat. And and you just mentioned a little while ago that John maybe, you know, wasn't the uh, smartest guy in, in, the, in the series. And yeah, you gotta you gotta agree with that because here he does he kills he kills Danny. So how do the unsullied know that he kills Danny? He must have told them. Duh, what a dumb move to make, you know. Right? <laughs> yeah, or he left his knife in her body. <laughs> yeah, right. I leave the evidence. I, I clearly not the brightest move uh, by Jon Snow, or in this case, the scriptwriters. Uh, yeah, the the whole Jon Snow thing. It's it's too bad because clearly, you know, this is one of the more uh, respected characters in the series. And uh, he was just not treated well by the script writers uh, over the last several episodes. And, uh, and you know, I, 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 what else is there to say? It, it, it's just it was not handled properly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, I want to go back to Arya because, you know, this would have, he, she sneaks up on him right again. outside where Danny, you know, he could have been like, hey, you know, or <laughs> even Tyrion, you know, why don't you, uh, you know, we got to take out Danny. Uh, it's a little obvious by do then it can't be king, you know. So why don't Arya? Why don't you use those faceless man skills? Take out Danny. Were they just Joe? Do you think maybe they're like Arya? Take out the Night King. She, she can't also take out Danny. What do you think? Do they avoid a good uh, a good plot point there? Yeah, I I, I think they could have gone real twisted with it too. I I kind of thought she was gonna kill John, and then take John's face, and then kill Danny. You know, I was trying. I was. I was hoping for anything twisted because, you know, it, we didn't get any of that. And, and Greg Braggs in the chat room brought this up. He's like, you know, the, the whole mentality that nobody's safe kind of disappeared the last two or three seasons. You know, I was kind of hoping you know Peter Baelish would show up and take off a face of somebody and end up being you know sitting on the throne because he was one of the faceless men. But you know, we didn't get any of that either. But. I was just hoping for a big twist, and I, I just didn't get it. Yeah, a little bit of, uh, you know, characters wasted, you know, their abilities or smarts or whatever you want to say. Uh, circling back to uh, Sansa, um, I never really figured out why she didn't like Danny, you know? And then, of course, Danny gives her a lot of reason, you know, later on. But off the bat, she had really didn't really have any reason to, uh, to hate Danny. Uh, Danny, uh, Shay, what did you think about how S Sansa ends up? She got what she always wanted. Uh, since she was a little girl, she wanted to be a queen. Uh, what did you think about the ending of her character? And the North being free. Right. And it leads to another series to me. Yeah, yeah open themselves up for it opens, series. And all of it just seems like you got John, Arya... All of them. It's just it's going to just be another. 
nothing was concluded last night. No- last night. Yeah, it was a little uh, uh, Tolkien-esque for me with the uh, Sam coming back with the look. At, look at this book, A Song of Ice and Fire. Exactly. I've got the I've got the title, you know. But uh, it was a little too uh, Hobbit ripoff or Lord of the well, Rings ripoff. Too, but... too, just kind of funny you mentioned that because there's a lot of shots in this episode that are very Lord of the Rings inspired, almost frame for frame. Mm. There's that scene with Danny coming out, looking at her army. Right. And it's almost exactly yeah. like Sauron's army in, uh, which which movie is it? Uh, Return of the King, I believe. And, and if you put it side by side, it's like really ridiculously close. Mm. Right. And that was, um, um, was it series director Miguel Sapochnik for the last one or? That was uh, he was the one before I think. Uh, no, but, no, this uh, was D and D himself. This was the okay. only episode. That, I think it was the only episode they directed to. The only yeah. episode that they. That's why I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> Just kind <kidding. Yeah>. uh, of. <laughs> uh, speaking of Sam, uh, Sam brings up uh, you know an idea. He, hey, why don't we let the why don't we let the people gonna let my horses let... vote too? Like... Yeah, exactly. And all, all of the uh, all of the lords latest sitting around. <laughs> Sam. Let me ask my horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, also, uh, uh, Aldo, how did uh, how did Sam become a grand maester so quickly? I was wondering, <laughs> wondering about that. He was on that uh, 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 Game of Thrones fast track uh, lane. <laughs> well, you know, it, the, the one thing about Sam is, you know, he was trying to bring democracy to to Estros, you know, although he got laughed out, out of the uh, stadium with that one. I, I like the character of Sam, so it's okay that he got fast tracked. I, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> right. Dilly dilly. <laughs> right. Um. So, uh, the uh, the small council. Let's talk, let's talk uh, about the small council, which was kind of, you know, kind of the gag reel for me. Once, oh, uh, yeah. Gosh, yes. <laughs> Bri- Brienne uh, was on the. I guess, I guess she was sitting on the small council, right? She became the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, Mark. Uh, when she was finishing Jamie's Wikipedia page, did you think uh, she was gonna get uh, slam him one for the one night stand, or, well, or did you think? <laughs> You knew that I, I was waiting for her to say at the end, you know, he kept his oath or something like that. I guess he, he she kind of did with, you know, he died defending his queen. Again, another moment fantastic for the timeline because there were some memes that popped up immediately. Somebody wrote in the world's biggest fuck boy or something like that. It was just incredible to see Twitter do <laughs> what they did with that scene. You know, I, I think her being Lord Commander of the, the, the Kingsguard makes some sense. And so that was good. You know, Braun, though, I mean, you want to talk about who played the game better than anybody? It might have been Braun. I mean, because he goes, he works his way up. At one point, he's promised the Riverlands, and he turns it in for High Garden, which apparently he gets, and now he's Master of Coin. I mean, tremendous job by him. You could say he probably played this game better than anybody. Yeah, for sure. He he uh, he, yep. he ends up better off than almost everybody, I yep. think. I mean, he was just a common sellsword. Now he's <laughs> master of coin. <laughs> uh, yeah, I still don't get that. So uh, Davos, master of ships, that kind of makes sense. You know? Yeah. Uh, totally. Uh, Podrick, of course, also a uh, king's guard, but has the duty, Joe, of... Uh, uh, he has He's on wheelchair duty first, I think. Was he? Master of wheelchair right. pushing, yes. Right, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Sam uh, was on the uh, small council as well. He left his water bottle underneath the chair. I don't know if he anybody... He plastic. So, oh, my goodness. So, I mean... So... Sir Davos had one too, Tooch. <laughs> Talk about... There was uh, two. Rushed endings. The editors uh, were a little bit rushed too. They were oh, they were under enormous pressure. They, the, the QC guy was working 24 hours a day. He missed, <laughs> missed right. a couple of... Uh... <laughs> oh. uh... <laughs> You know, I had to go back and watch that scene again because I just couldn't believe it the first time around. And I was thinking, maybe there's some hidden meaning to what's going on here. And I couldn't quite uh, walk away with anything substantial. You know, it, it, the whole thing started off weird with Tyrion arranging the chairs. I wasn't quite sure. Was he nervous? You know, I mean, he's done. That was a throwback to kind of what he did when he was when he was with his father. When his father was Hand of the King, he would rearrange the chairs. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Ooh. 
Gotcha. And, and, you know, the fact that he's left out of the book, you know, there's no mention of it. And, and is there, was there any meaning to that or was that just a, 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 a stupid joke that just wasn't any funny, that, that wasn't funny at all? It definitely didn't land. Yeah, that's for sure. It didn't land. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, moving on from the small council, Grey Worm uh, and the unsullied sail for Noth. Uh, not sure what they're going to do there. It's the it's the peaceful kingdom. They're, wouldn't they be better off as as mercenaries, Mark? Yeah, I mean, the second company is gone. Yeah. They could have a new, you know, the golden company. Excuse me, the golden company was just burned alive. You know, Harry yeah, Strickland, quickly. great job by him this season. Had, what, two lines, doesn't deliver the elephants, and then just dies immediately at the <laughs> Battle of Kings Landed. I mean, yeah, I guess this sweet. is Grey Worm keeping his promise to Miss Sandy. He promised her that, look, they would go to Noth, and even though, you know, Sandy said, we have nobody to protect us, and he said the unsullied would, so I guess he's keeping his promise. But you can't tell me he's not sailing that north for White Harbor to track down John. I mean, that's what he wants to do. And, yeah. you know, give me a spin off of Grey Worm tracking down John in the yeah. north. That would be fun, but... This is probably just Grey Worm keeping his promise. The uh, Unsullied with no nuts to freeze off, Aldo. Yeah. The, uh... <laughs> you know, the, uh... it, I guess when you have no nuts, you just stand at attention and, and, and expressionless for a while. I, I, I You know, because those guys are really, really good at doing that, right? Yep. I totally get it. Totally get it. <laughs> uh, so the... the, the... The Unsullied and the Dothraki, I thought most of them were killed at the in the long night. But uh, the Dothraki seemed to be, uh, you know, whooping it up there at the end after the King's Landing victory. But what happens to them? And <laughs> Joe, who asks the Dothraki to leave Westeros? I mean, they're like uh, they're like party guests that stayed too long. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody. I think they're going to be kind of like the wild and crazy guys from SNL. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, we're wild and crazy guys. They're, they're just left there. You know, they, they don't like water. They don't like ships. I mean, that's a that's a whole problem for uh, Brand to deal with, Mark. I think. Uh, but yeah, uh, and, and, but strangely enough, they're all hanging around by the docks. It's like you've been terrified of water your entire lives. Now you're going to hang around by the docks and be dock yeah. workers? They and, were waiting for a shift, maybe. Yeah, they were waiting for a shift. And I'm just glad they all survived because I thought they were all dead. And they seemed yeah. to multiply as the past couple of episodes went on. It was like right. there were three, now there are 300, now there are 3,000. Wow, impressive. Continuity issues uh, plaguing the final season. Uh I don't know if you guys saw that there was a petition to remake the last season of HBO. I'll go around yes. uh, here. D did you see the uh, petition, Shay? I did. Now, uh, do you think, the, did you sign the petition? No, I did not. No, okay, <laughs> I signed it. Uh, the petition to re should, uh, should the petition to remake the last season be honored, or should we just let it rest? Let it rest. Let it rest. Okay. Uh, uh, Aldo, what do you think? Remake the last season? I agree with Shay, and I want to make her a special uh, drink uh, because of that. Uh, oh, it's the hot skip and go naked. It is uh, lemon vodka, grapefruit juice, oh, cool. simple syrup, and beer. It's a punch-like drink, and uh, that's that sounds for delicious. We forgot to ask Mark for a drink too. Mark, uh, can we get you a drink? <laughs> this show's almost over, but uh... just just give me a bottle of vodka straight up. Maybe a couple of ice cubes. <laughs> we're going okay. to Chernobyl. Uh, yeah, well, we're going had, this Chernobyl style. I had a special <laughs> drink uh, uh, for you in man mind. It's oh. called Sand in the Crack. And uh, it's a mix of apple, <laughs> coconut rum, rum, Captain Morgan rum, pineapple juice, and cranberry juice. Uh, so if, I can I'll have two of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, uh... Uh -oh. <laughs> it's the heavenly sounds of the drink. <laughs> nice. Make it. nice. Uh... All right. That's when Tooch gets naked. Yes, there you go. <laughs> The, the character I uh, one character left. Uh, it's the character I most identified with at the end of this episode, and it's Drogon burning down the house in protest. You know, was, yes. uh, I want to go around and ask you: Was uh, was Drogon the Greek chorus in the finale, Mark? I, I I think we all sort of identified with Drogon, who was just like, you know what? Good luck with all that. I'm out. I'm done. Like I can't take this anymore. I am just leaving. Like I, I think we all sort of identify with Drogon at that moment. And <laughs> I, I know that they have said that yes, dragons are incredibly smart and intelligent. 
But burning down the throne to make the point that that's what destroyed Danny, I think was a little much. Yeah. Uh, Agreed. What did you think about how Drogon ended, Aldo? Were you uh, satisfied with the end for his character? Well, you know what? I actually thought it, that maybe the series should have ended right there. He burns the throne. Nobody gets it. And he flies away and, the, and, and fade the black. I think that would have been a better ending than having to sit through that council meeting and, and, and the rest <laughs> of what happened. Right. Uh, but you know what? I, I, Dr- Drogon deserves his own spinoff show. Uh, let's animate it and let's get it on the air as quickly as possible. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, uh, Joe, uh, before we wrap it up, can we can we uh, enter the streamer's court real quick and give our final verdict on Game of Thrones? Uh, yes, we can, but you need to stall for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so the streamer's court will give... Uh, our final verdict on uh, Game of Thrones, whether you recommend it or whether you uh, think it's uh, one of the best, better TV shows out there, just give your final thoughts and uh, whether or not you think uh, Game of Thrones uh, goes down as one of the best TV shows in history. Five. This is the Streamer's Court with Judge Tooch. That's right. Judge Tooch. Right. On trial are Benioff and Weiss again, Joe. We had a hung jury last week. We have new jurors, except for Joe, of course, is back. New jurors are Jurist Schofield, Jurist Gandia, <laughs> Jurist Beck, and Jurist Mandel. We'll start with Jurist Schofield. Uh, did Game of Thrones stick the landing? I mean, I don't think they... The difficulty with it is, given with how they had handled season seven and eight to this point, they probably finished it as best as they could. I think it's still, in the general scope of things, a rather underwhelming end to what it was, and just frankly is, just a fantastic achievement in television. I mean, the fact that we're sitting here on Monday night, like, breaking this show down, I mean, it spun off an international conversation that should be commended. It was an achievement in acting. It was an achievement in visualization. I mean, from the scene with Drogon coming up out of the ash in this finale yeah. or the Clegane Bowl and the visuals for that where you've got just basically a staircase to nothingness and then Drogon lights fire out of his mouth above it. It's just amazing visually. And to come to this point from in season one, the Battle of Whispered Wood, they didn't have the budget to film it. They didn't have a budget to put together a battle. And now we're seeing a battle that took them 54 nights to shoot in, in the long night. And so it's incredible television. I think it's definitely, a po- it was appointment viewing. And we had, you know, in, in sort of the streaming world to have like a week of buildup to the long night and a week of buildup to the Battle of Kings where we're wondering how it's going to play out, much like a football season. You know, we have a week buildup to Sunday and a game, you know, it moved the needle in a sense that we might not see again in this age. And so I think when we sort of all take a step back and look at the show in its entirety, yes, I think it was a tremendous achievement. Did they stick to Landon? Probably not. I think they did the best they could with what they had, which is interesting because, you know, a lot of people think when they ran out of George R. R. Martin's words and they had to do it on their own, they couldn't write well. We saw some great stuff post books such as the battle of the bastards such as hard home that wasn't in the books and so they could do some of this i think they thought that they could get it done in seven episodes and then six they needed 10 and 10 to do it right they didn't and it fell flat as a result of that but the overall body of work i think was fantastic just a shame that it kind of ended the way it did wow excellent analysis man you're right at home in the courtroom of course <laughs> it's what I tried to do once and failed that, so now I get to do stuff like this, which makes me happy. <laughs> Juris Beck, uh, you watched the show on my recommendation. Uh, sorry about that, but uh, I know. <laughs> uh, overall, uh, your thoughts on Game of Thrones as a series concluded. One of the better shows out there. 
Were you glad you yeah, watched it? Yeah, I mean, overall, I give it like a 9.45. Oh, that's good. That's but on really landing good. the last episode, I give it like a 1.42. <laughs> <laughs> the last episode. <laughs> I mean, it was such a great... And visually, uh, everything you just said is totally correct. I mean, I loved watching it. Binging it was... Right. It was a wonderful part of my life. Like, Saturday, Sundays, Game of Thrones. Yep. And I loved it all. And I loved the plot. And I just feel so disappointed. I get you. I, I do. do too. After, you, know, you know, reading all the books and yeah. I think we'll be talking about this with many different series that are coming up. Yep. Because I think the first four seasons, absolute brilliance. It's a lot to put together. Uh, beautiful, beautifully shot, beautifully acted. Uh, it's a shame they couldn't bring it home. It would have gone down probably in my book as one of the best television series of all time. It still is. I mean, it had everything I love fantasy. Uh, dragons, zombies, Frankenstein's monster, giant wolves. Fantasy football. <laughs> Fantasy football. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, Aldo, uh, for you, give us uh, some final thoughts on uh, on uh, Game of Thrones and uh, guilty or not guilty. Well, I um, first of all, applause to the foreman of the jury uh, for his thoughts. And Shay, I, I echo her thoughts as well. I, I think that the big question is because I, I don't think anybody is going to say that the ending to this series ruined the entire experience. That's just not going to happen. This was uh, bravura, uh, uh, filmmaking, uh, television. What is going to be in the debate for many years is is this the worst TV finale of all time? Is it worse than Dexter's? Is not is it worse than How I Met Your Mother? Is it worse than Lost? Is it worse than Heroes? Is it worse than Seinfeld? Some of, some of the great TV series that uh, most people regard as having just terrible, terrible endings. And so... I, I, I don't think it, it it's gonna it's gonna match the top ten just because of the production values of what we saw this entire season. At least for me, I still uh, I still hold it in high regard. And and uh, the worst uh, TV series finale for me is always going to be Lost. I don't think that any any TV show is ever gonna break that uh, in my lifetime anyway. Right. Great. Great thoughts, uh, Joe. Uh, final thoughts on Game of Thrones. Uh, Man, I just got to say, I, I, I watched this from the first day it premiered on HBO all those years ago. And I was hook, line, and sinker ever since. I had not read the books. And it was a journey, man. And I got to say, this is television history, what we're seeing here. What they did, what they were able to do. Shooting on location. Getting big budgets for a television show. This is what led us to where we are now with the quality of television that we are getting. So let me leave it at this. Yes, the final season was disappointing. Was it the worst thing I've ever seen? No. Was it amazing? No. But you know what? It was okay. And the first seven seasons before that were absolutely incredible. They had me the whole way. It was a great journey. And even though I didn't enjoy the ending, I still loved every second I spent with this series. And uh, I can't wait to see the prequels. And I can't wait to see if they're going to do any spinoffs. So I'm excited about all of that. Right. And I think that's where we're all going to end up is we love the ride. Maybe didn't love the destination, but uh, it was a worldwide phenomenon, like Mark said. I mean, it captured audiences around the world. Uh, people who love the show going to be disappointed with some of their favorite characters' endings. That's understandable. I was disappointed with the ending of Lost, but uh, you know, yeah, that's that's you know that's just the way it goes. Uh, Maybe uh, we'll see some uh, spin-off. Maybe they'll uh, learn from the mistakes of the uh, of this Game of Thrones in the in the prequel. I guess it's going to be a prequel, Joe. Yes, sir. The first one is going to be a prequel, and George R. R. Martin has very little to do with that one. So I'm interested to see if that's going to be any good. Mm. Right, right. I, I, uh, me overall, like I can't imagine that this was the ending that George R. R. Martin will have in his books. We talked about this. Mark, probably you're, you're in agreement that this isn't the way George Martin will wrap his books up, and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe uh, people would be yeah. like, "Hey, the books are going to be a lot better than that ending. I'm going to buy the books." So, you know, maybe Martin, maybe Martin told Benioff and Weiss, "Hey, this is how it ends." Psych. Maybe. <laughs> but, uh, maybe a, Psych. I give me my money. I'm, <laughs> I'm the master. I can write a better ending. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, uh, we reached. Hey, Tooch, real quick. Yeah, real quick, Tooch, on uh, and back on a little bit of news on the prequels. I was just reading they actually cast 
the main star for the prequels, and it's going to be uh, Naomi Watts. So get a big name Ooh. attached to be in the prequel. So wow. uh, that gives me a lot of hope for it. She's yeah. a great actress. Easy on the eyes, too. Right, Aldo? Yeah, I won't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've uh, reached the end of our show. I want to thank our guest, Mark Schofield. Uh, Mark, uh, where can we find you on Twitter? Best way to find me, at Mark Schofield on Twitter. I keep it easy, at M-A-R-K-S-C-H-O-F-I-E-L-D. Um, I talk about Toto a lot, talk about quarterbacks a lot, talked a lot about Game of Thrones over the past couple of weeks. But um, thanks, as always, guys, for having me on. It's always a blast to be on, Man, with you guys. Thank you. Awesome uh, comment. Thank you, sir. I uh, know I, I faked you out with the hold the line. Like, yeah, two cheese. He got the song wrong. But. Yeah, I mean, look, hold the line's a great song. As well. I mean, you can put almost anything up there. I mean, Pamela, Rosanna, hold the line. It's all, good stuff. It's all great stuff. Right, of course, uh, thank uh, the voice of Bears Barroom Radio, the Golden Piped, Dan Aguirre, and I want to thank the barkeeper uh, who provided the drinks for all of us. Uh, Joe, Joe, yeah. Joe's gonna pay the tab, although. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Aldo, find Aldo at Aldo Barkeeper on Twitter. Uh, follow Bears Barroom at Bears Barroom. Follow I Have a Stream at I Have a Stream Pod. Joe Mandel at, at Joe Mandel. J O E M A N D E L. Follow me at Santucci underscore John. And we've got bear season to look forward to. So it ain't all that bad. The Bears are going to be good. We do. <laughs> It's going to be a fun season, and before we get out of here, we got to talk about our next show, John. Yes. And our, our next show, we're going to be dissecting uh, the Ted Bundy film on Netflix, uh, starring mm. Zac Efron, right. which it's a very long title. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Extremely, <laughs> uh, it's extremely ex- wicked, shockingly evil, and vile, which were the words of the judge. Uh, yes, that's down correct. The sentence. Uh, great we'll movie. Be talking about, yeah, we'll be talking about if that movie glamorizes serial killers. So uh, that's going to be our next show, everybody. Talk about before the next big series hits. But uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Tooch, any closing words, my friend? Uh, also on HBO coming up, His Dark Materials, man. Looks like another good fantasy show. Maybe we'll get Mark back to talk some His Dark Materials. And, of course, Westworld, uh, Westworld Season 3. Uh, we've got a lot to choose from. We'll figure it out. Maybe we'll take some, uh, do some polls of the audience. And uh, yeah, uh, Joe, take us out with a little television. Yes, sir. See you guys next time. Uh-huh.